Ahoy and good Monday, June 20th. I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Hello and good Monday, June 20th. I'm Molly and this is Rocket Boom. Ah, much better. And why is that? What about the greeting hello makes it favourable over the greeting ahoy? As with most mysteries, we can look to history for the answer. Inventor Thomas Edison is credited with coining the word hello. Edison was asked in a letter whether or not the first telephones being installed in Pittsburgh should contain bells, to which he replied, I do not think we shall need a cast bell as hello can be heard 10 to 20 feet away. What do you think? It's likely that Edison's poor hearing resulted in a misspelling of the 18th century slang word hello, which was used to express surprise. The word hello became the de facto standard for answering a telephone, despite the fact that Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, preferred ahoy. Edison's misspelling happened during a crucial moment in history, and as a result, the word ahoy was no longer used as a telephone greeting. Hello became the new standard after only a small number of people started using the word. This is what sociologists call a tipping point. Say two new competing technologies are introduced, and only one can reasonably prevail as the new standard. Once one of these two technologies reaches critical mass, it can be impossible for the competitor to ever catch up. The market will tip in favour of the victor, and when consumers must make a heavy investment before knowing which way the market will tip, they will often choose the technology they expect to win. In essence, the advertising for either product can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. The winner wins only because everyone's been convinced it will be the winner. Thomas Edison was well aware of this principle as he was involved in one of the most intense technological rivalries in history, AC versus DC, or the War of the Currents. Thomas Edison invented direct current, or DC, an inexpensive means of transferring electricity short distances. Around the same time, George Westinghouse expanded on the research of Edison's personal rival Nikola Tesla to create alternating current, or AC, which could transfer electricity at greater distances, but required more expensive wires. The market could only tip in favour of one of these two technologies, and each side fought a fierce campaign. Edison attempted to paint the alternating current system as dangerous, while Westinghouse argued that its efficiency and scalability outweighed the risks. And then things got ugly. William Kemmler was convicted of murdering his wife in 1889, and was sentenced to a new form of execution, death by the electric chair. Thomas Edison hired an engineer to develop the electric chair as a means of performing executions with alternating current. Edison had been performing public demonstrations of animal electrocutions to try and show the public the dangers of alternating current. George Westinghouse hired the nation's finest lawyer to defend Kemmler on an appeal, arguing that the electric chair was a cruel and unusual punishment. Westinghouse's efforts were ultimately for naught, and Kemmler was executed on August 6, 1890. Edison even tried his hand at coining a new word, Westinghouse, a verb meaning death by alternating current. But alas, neither Edison's word nor his power system caught on. Westinghouse beat Edison in a bid to develop the power system for a Niagara Falls-based generator. This loss was significant. The market had finally tipped in favour of AC. DC power systems were gradually phased out, which has proven to be a costly and tedious process. The last DC power system in Midtown Manhattan was finally shut down in 2007, after over a century of costly incompatibilities. So, next time you're faced with a choice between two rival technologies, choose carefully. You don't want to end up on the wrong side of history.